Hi everyone, in this video we're going to see how to get onto the course server where you'll develop all your C programs and also go over some basic Linux commands that you can use to navigate around the server. So um, as you can see I'm on a Mac computer. Um, if you are on Windows you're going to need to download Sigwin um, but I'll get to that in a moment. So on a Mac or on Linux, I can just find my terminal. If you don't know where your terminal is, um, on Mac you can use Spotlight Search. I'm just clicking on the Spotlight Search button on the top right of my screen. If you don't know where that is, um, you can use the shortcut keys. Uh, so you can see at the bottom of my screen, Every time I press keys, you can see those. Um, so I just press command space to get to Spotlight Search. And then I'm just going to type in terminal. I actually have it saved in my doc. Um, I assume if you are on Linux, you know how to get to your terminal. Um, so I'm going to open just a basic colored term terminal so that it looks more like what you probably see. Uh, I have some nice colors set up automatically, um, but you're going to see something more like this. And I'm just making the text size bigger um, there with command plus, or I guess the lowercase is the equals key and that's why you're seeing it as command equals there. So now that I have my terminal open, I can interact with my computer um, using text commands rather than the GUI that we might be graphical user interface that we might be used to using. Um, and so a lot of the, all the commands actually I think that we're going to talk about in this class can actually be used on my Mac terminal um, or Linux. Or if you are on Windows, this is where you should scroll down on that this screen here and download Sigwin. So Sigwin is just a program that's basically going to set up a Linux terminal on your Windows machine. It's going to be really convenient um, if you just run this here and open Sigwin on your computer if you're on a Windows machine then you can just follow along completely how with the rest of us as long as you are pasting this command into that SIGWIN terminal rather than your um, Windows terminal. And if you have any trouble with that, let me know and we can get on a video call and make that happen. And we could also do it just in the first day of class as well. So I'm going to go back to my terminal and let's see. What I want to do to get to the terminal is use SSH. I think this is secure shell, something like that. Um, and I'm just going to copy this. And I'm just going to paste it right in here. And so I'm just going to, I can't use my mouse in the terminal. So um, I am I need to use my uh, backward key. That's what is showing at the bottom of the screen there. I'm just going to delete and put my um, net ID in there. And then once I've done that, I can press enter to run the command. And I'm going to put my password in. I think it cleverly knows not to display the password. Um, and now I am in the terminal. And let's see the commands that we want to cover. So to just see where I'm at, my present working directory, I can run the pwd command. And I see that right now I'm in the home folder. And inside the home folder, I'm in my netid folder. I can use ls for list contents of directory to see what's in here. And currently there's nothing in here. This is just a brand new, fresh folder just for me. Um, you're going to see the same thing when you log in for the first time. But these commands often have options that we can add to um, 
give us, uh, for example, for this ls command, I can add the option dash a. So the option is always going to start with a dash. And a stands for all. And that's saying, show me all the directories, including, excuse me, all the files and directories, including any hidden files or directories. So when I run this, I see that there's actually a bunch of hidden files here. Um, and in this class, we are definitely going to um, interact with some of these. So if I want to move around, I can use CD for change directory. I currently don't have anything really in my folder here. So let's actually change directory one level above. So if I want to go one level up in the file directory hierarchy, I can always write CD space dot dot, and that's going to bring me one level up. And I can see that by pressing PWD again. And I see that before I was in the my NetID folder, but now I'm just back in home. And so let's take a look at what's in home. So here I see uh, some other um, people's NetIDs. So those are, I think, students that have already logged into the server. Um, I can see a Dowdle directory um, that's Scott who uh, set up the server for us. Um, archives, I believe, is from a is uh, everything that was on here before this week. Um, and yeah, so here I am. Let's see, what should we do next? Let's go back into uh, my folder. And here you see an important thing that you're going to want to use all the time is tab completion. So I could have typed out my entire um, net ID, right? P19655. And that would work. Um, but let's go back, try it again. I can also use tab to, if there's only one thing that could work here, um, no other, none of these other directories start with the P, it's just going to automatically fill it in for me. And that's really convenient. I would say use tab completion all the time. So here I am back here. Let's try the make directory command. Um, I'm just going to make an example directory. And now if I use ls, I see example directory. Um, I'm just going to skip ahead and also show you the touch command. So touch just touches a file. And if that file doesn't already exist, it creates it. So let's make an example file. So I use touch to create an example file. Now if I do ls, I see I have both example directory. And you can see how on my terminal, just in the basic color scheme, I have my directories are purple and my example file here, any files are just white. Um, I think I can do mm, mm, ls minus l also gives me some more information about my files. Anyway, um, so there I use touch to create a file. I would say you'll probably just use vim to create files um, going forward, but touch is a good one to know. So let's also try the remove command. So if I want to remove that example file that I just created, I'm just going to use tab complete here, but you can see that there's two things that start with example. So it just filled in as far as it could, and now it's saying, hey, is it directory or file? So I want to do file. And if I run this, it just removes it. Now, let's say I want to remove the directory. Let's try that. So and let's see what's in here. Just got the directory. So I'm just going to remove that 
directory, right? Just gonna press enter. But I see that I actually can't do this because RM will only let me remove directories if I pass in the uh, minus R option or dash R option for recursive because that would mean telling it how to go into all the subdirectories. So if I want to remove a directory, I would need to do rm minus r, and now that's going to work. Let's see, another, well maybe let's just try man, so man, uh, short for manual, and man will let us see uh, information about any command that we put in here. So let's try man ls. So here it's telling us ls uh, is list directory contents. It's telling us we call it by calling, or we run it by saying ls, then we put in the options that we'd like, and we can also actually specify a file or directory here. Um, and we already saw the dash a option for all, there's oftentimes uh, both a short way to run your um, option and a long way. So let's just see both of those. Um, to get out of here, I can run, I can just press Q. So that's an important one to know because if I do that again and I maybe, yeah, Escape doesn't work, I'm pressing escape, like enter, enter makes it scroll down, so does down, uh, J also scrolls down, um, but if I wanted to get out of here, oh, it does say Q to quit, great, press Q. Um, so let's try out ls dash dash all, and just to show that that's the same as ls dash a. So there's often a long way and a short way to do the same thing. Um, so let's say I have a file. I'm just going to make one. And I want to copy it. I can do that by using the copy command, cp. I'm going to first put the file that I want to copy. And I'm going to second put the new file and now we can see there it, I copied it. Let's say I had a directory and I wanted to copy ex.txt into that directory. I can say copy ex.txt and then I'm going to put it into example underscore dir and let's say I still wanted to call it ex.txt. Now if I go into example dir, there it is. And if instead of copying, I want to just move a file, I can use MV. So say I wanted to move copy.txt into example there. Um, I can do that. Let's see, copy.txt. And now we can see copy.txt is no longer here, but it is. Inside example dir. Let's see what else. So we saw, oh, did we see control C? If you ever need to stop a Linux command that's running, um, like let me just try to SSH, SSH to ABC. Well, so there, I stopped it before it finished running. So if, if anything's just running, you run you write a one of your programs um, has an infinite loop in it or just something's taking a long time and you just want to stop it, you can always just press control C. Uh, we talked about tab completion. The last thing I'll talk about is control D. That's just a way to get out of the server. So if I press control C, I don't 
quit out of the server, but I can press Control D to quit out of the server. So that is all for this video. Good luck getting onto the server and let me know if you have any questions.